I'm a Donny Rivers fan. Get me out of here. Here we go, Ben, a new one off the list. We've got Tommy Roo and Joseph Aloru. Bit embarrassing to be fair. 1 0 down. Let's get straight into this review and rate the ground. Okay, just before this video begins, just to let you know this was all filmed before the announced that Schofield was sacked. So, obviously, in the pre and post match analysis, I didn't know he'd been sacked at the time. This video has just come out a day after, just because I wanted to get that Schofield video out the day before. So, just to clear all that up. In case you're wondering why I'm talking like he hasn't been sacked, um, <laughs> that is why. So anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. Right, hello everyone and welcome to this new video on the channel. So today is Saturday the 8th of May 2023 and today we've got the final game of the season. We've got Warsaw versus Doncaster Rovers at the Bescott Stadium in League 2. So I've got my thoughts pre and post match as well as the game and what we'll get up to during the day. And because it's a new ground on the channel, we're going to rate the ground as well. So without further ado... Let's get into the video. So with Warsaw, this is actually the first time I visited their stadium. So it's going to be the 44th of the 92 grounds in the EFL to tick off. And it's going to be my 80th ground in total. So I'm looking forward to updating my stats on that. But that's enough about my stats. Let's get into some pre-match analysis on both teams. So we're going to start with my team at Doncaster Rovers. So they're currently in 16th out of 24th in League 2. And it feels weird saying this on a pre-match analysis, but... We actually won our last game, which was a 1-0 home win against Colchester. <laughs> yeah, so it's our first win in 11 matches. And there were a lot of changes in that matches, uh, like to our starting 11. Uh, I think on the fan up, I got 6 out of 11 right, which um, shows you just how many changes there were. And one of them was our goalkeeper, Lewis Jones, who's, um, who's a Donny lad. Like I say, he's been reserve keeper all year to Jonathan Mitchell. And um, Mitchell on bench, so it weren't an injury, they just... Swapped him out, and I thought he had the best game. I thought he was probably probably our best player. He made some really good saves. It looked it looks like he's matured a lot more since he's last played. He just looks so much confident, so much more comfortable on the ball, and it's really good to see because, like I say, he's gonna be fighting for a contract because he is out of contract at the end of the season. So he'll be wanting to prove his uh, prove his point to the manager, and hope that he can either earn a new deal or if he if another club's offering first team football. Um, then he wants to prove himself to them so that he can go to a decent club and get a decent wage. The performance on um, Saturday was definitely a lot better than it has been. I, I still don't think it's good enough. Like we didn't look amazing by any stretch, um, stretch of the mark, but it was definitely better than it has been. And it's good to actually see us win a game. It just it feels weird now when it happens. It's I'm just not used to it. And um, no, it was just really good to get a win on the final game of home game of the season and. Hopefully we can finish the season strong with two wins in a row, but um, like I say, I'm not <laughs> counting my chickens, but um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens, but it would be lovely if we can do that and really finish the season on a high. As for today's opponents, Warsaw, they sit a place below in 17th out of 24th, and in their last game, they drew 0-0 away at Crowley Town. So Warsaw are also in a dreadful form, just like us. Uh, so they're winless in nine, which they've had five losses and four draws out of them once. And um, since that win nine games ago, the last win before that was on New Year's Day. So they can't buy one at the minute. And as you can probably tell from that stat, they've only won two games in 2023, which really isn't good enough as well. So just like us, they're in a bit of dire form at the minute, not doing well. And because of that, they've recently sacked their head coach, Michael Flynn, uh, who it sounds like is going to be their new Swindon manager by the sounds of it. And they've appointed our former assistant manager, Sean O'Driscoll, who is Richard O'Kelly. So yeah, it'll be interesting seeing him on the touchline in the Walsall dugout tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I hope it goes well for him at Walsall until we find a new manager. But hopefully not too well tomorrow. So in previous meetings this season between the two teams, um, we had the last match at the Keep Me Up Stadium. It was on a Friday night because of the World Cup in Qatar. And we were on the wrong end of a 2-0 win for Warsaw. We, yeah, we didn't look good that game at all. Uh, we just never turned up, to be fair. And they came out in the second half and punished us. Um, rightly so as well, to be fair. Uh, we just just never looked up for it. And um, this was really on in Schofield's um, tenure. So it was kind of an early sign of what's been coming this season. Like I say, it weren't long after the Colchester match. And it was that kind of spell where we were inconsistent. So we were like winning one, losing one. Uh, I think... Like I say, the Colchester one was the week before or the week before that. And um, this will kind of like the next sign after that of things to come. So moving on to my score prediction then. So I do I think we're going to make it two wins in a row. Or do I think Walsall are going to get their first win 
in 10 games and only the third one of 2023. My prediction is neither. I don't think either team's going to win this. I think it's going to be a draw. Um, I was orig were originally going to go for a 2-1 Warsaw win, but I thought they can't really buy a win at the minute. We're both just as bad as each other, really, at the minute. Uh, I think it's going to be one of the games where, you know, possessions going either way, like it's back, going to be a back and forth game, but with very few chances at the end of the bits of possession. Um, I think both teams will score, but other than that, I'm not expecting no spectacular. So I'm going to go with Warsaw 1, Doncaster Rovers 1. So for the final time this season, that is the pre-match analysis of Doncaster Rovers done. So let's head over to the Poundland Stadium. I think I called it the best Scott earlier on, so apologies for that. It used to be that, but let's head over to the Poundland Stadium and see how the match goes. But before then, let's see what we'll get up to before the match. All right, so we're just starting day in the Punchers Toba Carvery. Just having a coffee and a walk to start the day off. And because it's last day of the season, of course, we're in fancy dress. So it's my beautiful assistant, Lizzie. See, we're going to say, I'm a Donny Rovers fan. Get me out of here. I've got Tommy Roo and Joseph Alou Roo as Joey well. Alou Roo. Joey Alou Roo, sorry. Even better. Um, and I'll show you mine when we get there. But yeah, last day vibes. I'm a Donny Rovers fan. Get me out of here. Here we go, then a new one off the list, number 44 of the 92 and new ground number 80, I believe. Let's get some pre-match done and let's see how the day goes. <laughs> Joe Hello, Hello. Hiya, you okay? I'm alright, how's you? Good. Yeah, good, thanks. There we go, sir. Cheers, thanks a lot. Cheers. And we're in. I know, it's all. <laughs> right, here we go, we got a bike, Carlin. Not a lot here to be fair, just a very small room for a pub. Nowhere to go around Warsaw, so this will do. Here we go, this is the food. We've got the Sadler's snack just on the corner of the away, and I've got this in a steak pie. I'll show you it unwrapped, and I'll let you know how it goes at the end of the video. Hey! Two poor teams to be fair, neither team's really had many chances, but what we've had has been poor. Like I say, it's a game between two poor teams here, neither team's been able to get a foothold of it so far. Still 0 0 after about halfway through the first half. About four minutes gone, still 0 0. Neither team has had many chances. So a few in first 10 minutes or so, but apart from that, it, we've just been playing back and forth with no chances either way to be fair. Very poor again, you can tell it's a dead rubber, both teams just want to finish the season. I get this awful run of form out of way, it's uh, not a lot at all at the minute, it's still no no, probably a bit last bit of action before half time. Half time. Nil. So half time it was Warsaw nil, Doncaster Rovers nil, and you can kind of tell with this one that it's a bit of a end of season dead rubber between two of the lower form team, uh, teams in the table. It's not been a classic by any uh, stretch of the mark. Both teams have took it forward, we've kind of took it in turns taking the ball forward, but we've not really been any clear clutch cut chances at the end of each attack um, like I say both teams are kind of minimising the chances between each one it's just that final third as well both teams just look like they're struggling to play that final ball and really get a clear cut chance but I'd say so far Warsaw's probably been the better team they've definitely had the better chances we've like I say we've took it forward but Warsaw's definitely had the better chances and to be fair they probably should be in front but it's definitely not been a classic like I say not 
a great deal of action in this first half. Um, and to be fair, it's one of the games where both teams are on the beach, so I can't really um, see the second half going any better. But we'll soon find out. So let's find out right now. Let's get back to the Poundland Stadium and see how the second half goes. <laughs> No, also it's been coming. It has been coming. One no also and that has been coming to the pair. We've just not started at all. We've hit a few balls up forward but we've come to no avail at all and Walsall's had the better chances of the should have scored before that and uh, they finally took it. It's two poor teams back same up there. In the lead, it will going to finish with us in the table, so it's not looking good for the rest of the game. I can't see a score at all, we've had no chances at all. So, Walsall won Donny Hill, so they can have some improvement. Just like a power off, a bit embarrassing to be fair. 1 0 down. What is the actual point? Way too easy. So I checked it with 1 0, Warsaw added a second in. The fair have been all over up to that point, but since I had a second goal, we've come back into it a bit more. It's not been great by any means, but we have got the goal back and we have looked the most likely over the last 10 minutes. But still not been good enough. Let's see if in these last 10 minutes, if either team can really get a foothold on this game. Like, it's not been good either way, so let's see what happens in the last 10 minutes. Full time, 2 1 Warsaw. End of the season, we're loss. Unfortunately. So at full time it's finished Warsaw 2, Doncaster Rovers 1. It'd have been lovely to get two wins in a row to finish the season off, but ultimately it was never going to happen today. We never looked like we were going to win. And you could tell that game were like two poor teams, two very out of form teams who really real struggling to get any wins um, in 2023. Yeah, Warsaw, Warsaw were a better team, I'd say. Uh, we have our chances, don't get me wrong, um, but Warsaw were definitely better of the two and they deserve the win. So it weren't a great game, like I say, not a lot of quality in the game. Uh, both very similar to the first half to fair, both teams taking it forward, but um a, not a lot of end product um apart from the goals. But yeah, not it's one of them games, like I say, both teams got nothing to play for. They're both on the beach after a very poor season uh, by their standards, and it it just were it just weren't a good game. It was a poor game, um and it was poor from us on the pitch and also, pretty much off the pitch, it weren't a nice atmosphere in the stands at all. There were our own fans fighting with each other. There were a lot of pyro set, set off, which, ironically, by the time we actually scored, um, we'd run out of pyro. So, we had none to set off. So, I think we must have been in double figures for that amount, but just, we are just getting set off, just just causing hassle. And, yeah, it weren't a nice atmosphere in the stands at all today. It felt a bit... You felt a bit on edge while you were watching it, especially the second half. So yeah, not not the way that we wanted to end the season. Um, but now this moves on to the summer. So this is probably, the, at least in recent history, the biggest summer in this club's history. It is absolutely huge and it is vital that we get this right. Not just for us to push on, but to prevent us losing our EFL status. Because it is a real possibility of I mean, that out there just doesn't give me like any confidence whatsoever the team the manager not like we're losing fans like you say when you look at the amount of season tickets sold compared to last year we're already over a thousand lower than this stage last year and we got relegated last year like i say so yeah it's it's absolutely huge whether that is with skillfield or not we're, we'll see i mean it is going to be there at start of season let's put it that way um <laughs> is you know um, if it had sacked him, they'd have probably done it already. So I can't, 
you know, we're just going to have to, whether you're Schofield in or Schofield out, we're just going to have to accept that he's going to be taking charge of his team at the start of the season. He's going to have his transfer window to get the players he wants, and hopefully that can make a difference. I mean, I'm real, not keeping my fingers crossed. We've got this cash injection to put into the first team squad, so, you know, let's see. Well, we've not got a figure, so let's see what that cash injection is, whether it makes a difference, and most importantly, whether it's spent rightly, because it's, you know, it's all good throwing cash at anything, but if it's not on smart or good signings, then, you know, you're just burning money, basically. But yeah, it's absolutely vital that we get this summer right, because, to be honest, I'm not even thinking about promotion next year, which is what we really should be as Doncaster Rovers aiming for, uh, um, and what the board set out for at the start of the year. Um, I'm more concerned with keeping our EFL status because I think it's a real possibility we're going to be in a dog scrap um, next year. It's going to be, it's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy because when you look at like Wrexham and Notts County coming up, and I think, like I said, I think League Two's been weaker this year. I think it's going to be even stronger next year because um, I think the teams, like I say, the four that came down last year, which were us and three others, um, that they were extremely poor. Like I think Crew might have crept into top half. I think they finished 12th, but apart from that, every team's finished in bottom half. Um, and like I say, you're getting rid of um, Rochdale and Hartlepool, and you're replacing Wrexham and Notts County, who are going to be they're going to be strong next year, both of them. And it's going to be a lot stronger league, and we're going to have to improve, or we really could be at risk of going back to the conference. So anyway, that's my final post-match thoughts for the season for Doncaster Rovers. And it's also new ground on the channel. So let's get straight into this review and rate the ground. So we're going to start off with pre-match. And basically we had to go straight into the stadium because we're nothing around it uh, to do pre-match. So we, um, we're going to go into the parking, which is the away pub. But they're housing migrants now, so we couldn't go in. Um, we were told we could go in the, um, the Saddlers Club. Um, but apparently that's been shut for five years and uh, obviously the bar in the uh, the big stand behind the goal is for home fans only so um, yeah straight into the concourse uh, luckily you could drink in there um, but yeah not imp not really impressed with Warsaw to say we had to we had to go straight in which I don't mind because it were alright in there but um, that's catering not pretty much it's um, you know you want someone to do around there and for absolutely nothing unless you had to trek into Warsaw which by the time we've done that and come back it's not worth it at all so yeah pretty much is going to score low here and pretty much as low as you can get we're going to go one star next up we've got catering and it don't get much better from here to be fair in terms of alcohol they had they only had carlin and i can't remember the brand of cider but it wasn't fruity cider it was just like your regular cider and um the other soft drinks we had in the bar were pepsi um, I think we had wine as well, but not a lot of option at all. And to make matters worse, uh, the Carlin barrel had run out before kickoff, so we were scraping, literally scraping the barrel. My second pint were literally the end of the barrel, and it tasted disgusting. It took, took about five minutes to pour, um, and the cider weren't much better. We were having problems with that as well. Food were all right. It was just a basic puck of pie because we we're still waiting on um, on the cheese on the burgers, uh, so I didn't get to try one of them. Prices were all right, and the service, they did what we could with a lot of problems, but, you know, they could have sort of a barrel out before that, because, you know, <laughs> surely you make sure they're full. If it's running out before kickoff, then, you know, you're having a few problems. So, not great on the catering front, just like pre-match, so I'm going to go with a one and a half out of five. Next up, we've got the ground, and it's all right. All right, it's probably the best word I'd use to describe it, not Absolutely fantastic, but not awful. Yeah, it's a bog standard League Two ground, um, so that's probably the best good <laughs> best thing I could say on that. Um, the bit obviously we've got the big stand that towers above the rest. Uh, that looks really impressive, and the rest is pretty average for League Two, I'd say. So I'm going to go straight down middle here. I'm going to go with two and a half out of five. Next up, we've got atmosphere, and I think you can get quite a good atmosphere in this place, and it's not surprising because the roof's quite low on the um, the three small stands. But like I say, I think it will more just for case of it was an end of season match between two teams who's had an awful season, so you're not going to expect a great deal of atmosphere from both teams. So, like I say, when when it got going, it did sound good, but when it got going, was not very often at all. So I'm going to go straight down the middle here again, and we're going to go with two and a half out of five. And finally, we've got overall enjoyment. It were okay. I enjoyed more on the way, like before we set off and the journey to the ground and before we got in the ground itself and 
actually being in the ground. So they were they were pretty good. Uh, like I say, I went for a meal afterwards as well. Um, just kind of debrief about the end of the season. And um, but yeah, like from half time onwards, like I didn't feel greatly comfortable in the stadium. To be fair, there were a lot going on around us on both sides, and um, it weren't a nice atmosphere at all. Um, so I didn't enjoy that football weren't great to watch but like i say you stick with him through the good times and the bad times so yeah not the best but it wasn't too bad i'm gonna go i'm gonna go two here because like i say compared to some other games and how much i actually enjoy that looking back on it 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 were the most enjoyable so we're gonna go two out of five here so that gives Walsall a final score of 9.5 out of 25. That puts them um, 13th out of 15th, which is the lowest of the EFL clubs so far. So not the best rating for Walsall. Uh, like I say, it might have been different if I went on a different day, but that's the rating I've gone with, and we'll see if it improves if I go again. So that is it for this video. Um, like I say, May is a bit of a weird month because we've not got a lot of football on with most of the leagues finishing. So... I'll keep you updated on Twitter at Adam Gittins PT, and um, I've got a few videos coming out. Like I've got me uh, end of season predictions um, that I made just before uh, the season started, so I'll be going through them. And I've also got a few other videos planned as well. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. We're nearly at 800 subscribers, and we're on the road to a thousand. So every bit of support means the absolute world. Um, so until then, take care, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.